Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurologist from Rajmandri, Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. My email is sriklpm at gmail.com. Today we are going to talk about a very very interesting topic especially pertaining to critical care neurology and intensive care, the pupillary light reflex. So we are going to talk about not only pupillary reflex but also menes and other optic reflexes. So pupillary reflex is very very important especially in critical care. In fact it is one of the most important brainstem reflexes. So what is pupillary reflex? The afferent of pupillary reflex is the second nerve and the efferent is the parasympathetic component of the third nerve. So when we throw light on one pupil, example right pupil, not only right pupil but also the left pupil constricts. When we throw light on the right pupil and when the same right pupil constricts, it is known as the direct light reflex. But when we throw light on the right pupil, but not only the right pupil, but when also the left pupil constricts, we call that as the consensual light reflex. So very, very important. We have the direct light reflex. When we throw light on the pupil, the same pupil constricts, the same side pupil constricts, that is known as direct light reflex. When we throw light on one pupil, if the other, if the pupil on the other side constricts, we call that as the indirect light reflex or consensual light reflex. So when the pupil constricts, when we throw light, it indicates the intactness of the brainstem, that is the optic nerve and the parasympathetic fibers of the third nerve. So if the pupil's light reflex gets affected, it is one of the important signs of the brainstem dysfunction and usually when the pupillary light reflex is absent, we, we consider the state of brain death. So pupillary light reflex is very, very important. So pupillary light reflex, what is the pathway, the exact pathway? Fibers subserving the pupillary light reflex and other optic reflexes passes through the visual pathway but before the geniculate ganglion that is the lateral before the lateral geniculate body it passes to the pre-geniculate pathways in the same fashion as fibers subserving vision till that particular point but they leave the optic tract just before it reaches the lateral geniculate body so fibers subserving the pupil light reflex and the other optic reflexes passes to the pre-geniculate pathways in the same fashion as fibers subserving vision but they leave the optic tract just before it reaches the lateral geniculate body. So here again an important concepts: the up to the optic tract that is the optic nerve, optic chiasm and the optic, optic nerve, optic chiasm and the optic tract till that particular point of pathway the pupillary light reflex gets affected but beyond that that is the lateral geniculate body and optic radiations and occipital cortex the pupillary light reflex does not get affected very important point because the pupillary light reflex just before reaching the lateral geniculate body it diverts and goes to the superior colliculus so only till optic tract the pupillary light reflex gets affected but lateral geniculate body and beyond the pupillary light reflex is normal so it helps in the localization also so they leave the optic tract just before it reaches the lateral geniculate body. Pupillary light reflex fibers travels to the pretectile nucleus, just rostral to the superior colliculi. From the pretectum, the axons are sent, sent to synapse on the Edinger Westphal nuclei. Some light reflex fibers project to the ipsilateral pretectile nucleus to mediate the direct light reflex, others decussate to the posterior commissure to mediate the consensual light reflex. So we have direct reflex, direct light reflex and consensual light reflex because the fibers pass from the pretectile nucleus 
directly and also it crosses to the opposite side and goes to the other side also and the second concept is that the light reflects also at the level of optic chiasma some go straight ipsilaterally some decussate and go to the opposite side so there is crossing occurring at two places one at the optic chiasm where the pupil light reflects some go ipsilaterally some go contralaterally and second some fibers project to the ipsilateral pretectal nucleus to mediate the direct light reflex others decussate to the posterior commissure to mediate concentral light reflex so because of this there is not only the pupillary constriction to the same side of the light source but also the other side pupil constricts and then the effect is that the parasympathetic fibers from the edinger westphal nucleus are carried by the oculomotor nerve to the pupillary sphincter so here in this diagram you can see the visual pathway from the eye going through the optic nerve but at the level of optic chiasma the nasal fibers cross over and the temporal goes fibers cross ipsilaterally go ipsilaterally and the pupillary light reflex also some of the fibers go ipsilaterally some of the fibers cross so again there is a direct light reflex and concentral light reflex because of this crossing over and then the second crossing over occurs in the light reflex pathway just before the lateral geniculate body it goes to the pretectal nucleus not only on the same side but crosses and goes to the opposite side also to the posterior commissure and therefore again this also accounts for direct light reflex and concentral light reflex and then the efferents are from the parasympathetic fibers running on the third nerve which causes the constriction of the pupil so summarizing the pupillary reflex pupillary afferent fibers from the right eye are crossed and uncrossed and run in both optic tracts the first crossing occurs here they leave the optic tract before the lateral geniculate body and send projections to the pretectal regions bilaterally again a second crossing occurs accounting for the direct and the indirect light reflex or concentral light reflex the edinger westphal nucleus sends pupillomotor fibers through the third nerve to the ciliary ganglion and the post ganglionic fibers innervate the pupillary sphincter because of the bilaterality of the pathways a light reflex in the right eye causes pupillary constriction in both eyes so very very important this is perhaps one of the most important brain stem reflexes we elicit in the intensive care unit or the critical care neurology right now having discussed the pupillary reflex next we'll we'll see the menes and other optic reflexes what is menes reflex nature has given a very good protection to the eye eye is very very important because vision is one of the most important senses so nature wants to protect vision at any cost so it has given a wonderful protective reflex known as menes reflex so what is menes reflex when a threatening object comes towards the eye immediately we close the eyelids when a threatening object comes close to the eyes we immediately close the eyelids so as to protect the eye from the threatening injury this is menes reflex so what is the pathway of menes reflex fibers for menes reflex blinking in response to light or a threatening response synapse in the superior colliculus afferent from the tectospinal fibers tectospinal tract fibers descend to the facial nuclei from the facial nuclei fibers go to the orbicularis ocular efferent causing the causing the closure of the eyelid so the response consists of eye closure that is blinking in response to light or threatening stimuli so this is a wonderful protective reflex known as menes reflex which helps us to protect our eyes from light or any threatening stimuli again a wonderful protective reflex given by by nature to protect our eyes the other optic reflexes that is the turning of the head and eyes towards a visual stimulus so when a visual stimulus comes we immediately turn our head and eyes to see what is the type of visual stimulus this is also a kind of this is also an optic reflex but what is the pathway fibers controlling somatic visual reflexes such as turning of the head and eyes towards a visual stimulus 
synapse in the superior colliculus again from the tectospinal tract fibers from there tectospinal tract fibers descend to more caudal brainstem nuclei to execute the reflex response so this is the another this is another optic reflex that is turning of the head and eyes towards the visual stimulus so so far we have uh, discussed one of the most important reflexes in neurology that is the pupillary light reflex one of the most important protective eye reflex that is menace reflex and other reflexes like turning the head and eyes towards the visual stimulus i hope you have enjoyed listening to my lecture if you have liked it please put a thumbs up and share and subscribe my youtube channel dr sinwas medical concepts and my fb page dr sinwas concepts other important concepts i put in a question answer format in focus neurology if you are interested you can buy it online from all leading booksellers including amazon but please like and subscribe my youtube channel dr sinwas medical concepts thank you bye